Welcome back everyone to a new video on the channel. For a bit more than half a year at this point, I have been working on this project right here, which is my own e-power board. Now, the reason it took me a minute <laughs> to actually make a video about these, um, I've act I think I had these ever since February 28th. So I think when these arrived, but the reason it took me so long is because basically the next day I began moving, but I then basically spent the next at least one and a half weeks painting uh, my new flat because the previous tenant decided that green would make for a perfect color for the kitchen and yellow would make for a perfect color for the living room. It took a couple coats for that to completely be gone. So that's part of the reason why it took me quite long to get to the point now where I'm making a video about it. And the other part obviously is well, I was moving, right? So my setup, all of this right here was in pieces. But anyways, that's not what this video is going to be about. This video is going to be about this thing right here. And um, the good news, as well as the bad news about these specific samples. Bad news is I got some things wrong, uh, but they're not catastrophic. So these can be used. They work. I've actually already tested these uh, and even run on LN2 on a 6870, but um, I'll get to that later on. The, the problems with this base, it's, actually it's really just two things um, that are kind of wrong about this. Um, the first thing is uh, the onboard vid mod specifically, um, oops, specifically vid seven. I didn't read the data sheet for the controller correctly and thought that the uh, vid implementation on this was proprietary, um, by which I mean that vid7 changes the offset sign uh, of the voltage offset that you're applying to a reference voltage of about 1.6 volts by pulling different um, pins, different vid pins high or low, right? Um, it doesn't, VID7 does not determine the offset sign. It determines whether you're applying an 800 millivolt offset to those 1.6 volts uh, or whether you are not, right? Um, so the VID implementation on here is just a box standard Intel VR11 as it is configured, I want to point out, because the controller can also do AMD's, I believe, six bit VID mode, uh, as well as Intel's older VR10. Vid. So um, as it is configured, oops, sorry for the glare. As it is configured um, on the board, right, uh, it is running in VR11 mode. So for those that will be getting one of these, um, ignore what it says right here about Vid7 uh, and just scratch off the silk screening. Uh, probably not needed, but get the point. Um, Vid7. Uh, it does not determine the offset sign uh, of the voltage offset that you're applying to those 1.6 volts, roughly, reference voltage. And the other thing I kind of got wrong here <laughs> is the footprint for the 6-pin PCIe power connectors. I simply did not know that there is apparently a variant of this power connector where the distance between these two rows of through holes right here is five millimeters. The footprint I wanted is the one where the distance between these two rows of through holes is, I think, either 4.2 or 4.4 millimeters. I don't exactly remember off the top of my head, but I already fixed that. It's now the correct one, but obviously, right, these are the first samples. Here, it is still wrong. Um, but other than that, these work, right? Um, here's the, uh, the 6850. A 6850, it's a 6870 um, that I e-powered with one of these. Unfortunately, uh, this card didn't actually do that well. Um, and it's not because of this thing right here. I want to point that out. It's because this thing cold bugs at negative 70 degrees Celsius thereabouts, uh, which is bad because there's 6870s that will literally run full pot. So just because of the fact that this thing cannot run full pot, it is already kind of a loser. Despite that though, I did actually manage to put up some decent scores with this. But yeah, it's just kind of unfortunate that I happened to uh, roll the dice, so to say, uh, on, on a 6870 that cold bugs. And also another thing uh, that I found out 
the hard way, kind of, whilst I was um, assembling the first one of these right here. This is actually the second one that I ever assembled. Uh, but I guess before I actually go into that, I should first mention that voltage, uh, forward voltage sensing, is what I meant to say, um, is mandatory on these, kind of. Um, you can obviously just hook your wires up directly to the output here and not have forward voltage sensing. But yeah, the uh, necessary um, sense lines are exposed right here. Um, don't run these, don't run these sense lines too close to the switch nodes, because if you do that, actually, it's not that necessarily bad things will happen, but the VRM will become very unhappy about it. Um, it, it, or at least one of the one of the phases kind of begins acting up as if it's confused. I don't know how exactly to describe it, uh, but you know, just something to be aware of. Do do put some distance between some good distance uh, between these sense lines and the switch nodes. Kind of makes sense though if you think about it, right? Because like the switch nodes are incredibly noisy, right? So anything you run basically right behind those. Um, yeah, it's gonna, it's not great. You shouldn't do that. Speaking of things that aren't great, what a transition, I know. Um, things I don't like about this design. To kind of explain my first kind of uh, thing that I, that I actually don't really like about these and have definitely ever since changed, um, I'm gonna grab an ePower 5 and I think you'll fairly quickly see what I mean at least I think. Um, this is a six phase E power board, right? This is a 12 plus two phase. This thing's pretty huge for a six phase. Um, almost the size of an E power five. Uh, actually, it's ever so slightly longer than an E power five, as you can see. Uh, but length, frankly, actually not even that big of a deal, but height, right? The, the height of the PCB kind of bothers me because it's a six phase and it's almost as large as a 12 plus two phase. So um, the, the new version of this, the B3, right? The new revision of this that I'm currently working on is just ever so slightly taller than a standard height PCIe device, uh, such as this one right here, right, the 6850, right, if you look at it, the PCB basically ends exactly where the slot bracket ends. Um, it's a standard height PCIe device, and the new version of this uh, will be ever so slightly taller uh, than uh, a standard height PCIe device. I think it's something around five, six millimeters taller. So that's that's the big change for, for the new revision of this power board, making it more compact. Uh, that said though, obviously it being larger does kind of have an advantage. Um, the first one being the thermal load of the, the VRM, right? The, the heat output of the, the MOSFETs uh, is more spread out. Um, and also you get more surface area here on the attachment points to attach this to a graphics card. But it's just, it's big, unnecessarily big. But yeah, the new version of this, I hope to get it done soon-ish. Um, I'm currently working on the um, yeah direct VRM control circuitry, by which I mean the, the circuitry that directly surrounds the PWM controller. Uh, currently reworking that is what I should should say because I do kind of want to put a system behind it because uh, I can I can save some PCB space uh, that way and and still keep um, this easily uh, hand solderable if that's even a word. But um, so one of the things I did um, here is actually I kind of blew this up in the sense that I put more space between the individual components, right? I think you can see what I mean, right? Um, there's there's a bit more distance between the individual components that so makes it a lot easier to work on this uh, by hand. Whereas if I put them as close together uh, like they are on the original board, you know, while you'd be soldering down one component, you'd be desoldering another. 
So uh, that's that's why the 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 components are are spaced apart a bit further. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Next video might be about one of these being on some other GPU that I'm then benching or it might be about the new version or the next video about this might not even be on my channel. It might instead be on Soyo's channel, for example, because he's going to get some of these. But yeah, regardless, hope you enjoyed this one. And that was loud. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this one and hope to see you guys again in the very next video.